founded by the Frank C. Ortis Art Gallery and the City of Pembroke Pines, Frank Contemporaries is a pop-up exhibition dedicated to promoting emerging artists and creative community resources, an event that offers artists, students, and industry insiders the opportunity to present their work, discover new peers and supporters, and foster professional connections. From artists, writers, curators, and art students, to those who work in galleries, auction houses, and museums, people from all cultural sectors are welcome. Located at the Charles F. Dodge City Center in the heart of Pembroke Pines, the Frank is a two-story art gallery named after Mayor Frank C. Ortis for his decades-long commitment to the cultural arts. Lovingly known as the Frank, this contemporary art gallery showcases the works of regional, national, and international artists in a robust exhibition program complemented by workshops and lectures that support social engagement and artistic innovation. Welcome everyone to Virtual Frank Contemporaries. Today, we are thrilled to be showcasing the artistic endeavors and art projects of emerging artists and art students from Nova Southeastern University. I am so thrilled to have all of you here tonight. Thank you so much for representing your school and Broward County. It is such a joy to be able to share the work of such fine student and emerging artists with our audience today. The first artist who will be sharing her work with us tonight is Ashwini Sivaram. Ashwini, take it away. Hi everyone. It's so nice to see all of you today on Zoom virtually. My name is Ashwini Sivaram and I am a painter primarily. That's what type of media I work with. Um, a lot of my works are mostly paintings, but I do like to work with repurposed materials as well. So my first piece, as you will see in the first image, is called Rise. And it is a from the movie Creed. It's a boxing movie, and a lot of my paintings are inspired by some kind of feeling of nostalgia, as I watched a lot of boxing movies with my dad when I was little. This piece was my breakthrough piece as an artist, because it happened when I was going through a rough season. So as you can see, he's kind of breaking through um, the glass and the foil. So that was kind of reflecting what I was going through. So um, I was able to put that on this canvas and I realized that I do want to incorporate a lot of detail into all my paintings like I did in this painting. So as you'll see in a lot of my works, I love detail, I love making things pop and I love making an impression on not just my paintings but also on the viewer who's looking at the paintings. So in my other paintings, I don't necessarily have like a specific theme. I know a lot of artists like to stick with one theme my theme is mainly detail and a mix of hip-hop, um, boho, and vintage, honestly, because that's what um, it's composed of. And um, in my other works, also it depends on uh, what season of my life I'm in. If I'm able to see um, experiences that the world is going through, I like to kind of capture that in my art. And another component of my artwork that I like to focus on is making the old into new. Um, one of my artworks is kind of like a hip hop style jacket and it's based off a jacket I got on Goodwill. So I wanted to kind of paint over it and make something pop and impress the viewer. So that's kind of my fourth image. My third image was finished this summer during the Black Lives Movement. Um, and I wanted to kind of capture the pain but also the strength of a black woman. So. I put that all on this painting. And another painting that I created, it's another hip hop painting. This one was just for fun, so I don't necessarily stick to the same theme all the time, as you can see, but this one was just for fun and um, it was during my study breaks. So as I mentioned before, I love to work with old materials. So I am currently working on a series of vinyls and um, I painted the vinyl in image eight. So it has a bunch of realistic acrylic bubbles and it was made using a matte spray and some acrylic paint. So I'm currently working on at least 12 vinyls. I'm not sure what my other designs are gonna be, but I do wanna add a lot of detail and make it realistic, just like I did in this one. Um, and then you can also see another pair of shoes that I found in my basement. I kind of um, repurposed and created 
avatar design on it, The Last Airbender, because I love that show. So I put that on these pair of shoes and I added some different colors to it and it was made using acrylic paint. And then my last image, it's called um, Graves into Gardens. It's based on a Christian song that I listen to a lot during this season. And um, it just kind of shows how much I value my faith. So I kind of included the skeleton. This is all made of acrylic paint again. And I added little flowers and different garden elements to it as well to show that the old can be made new again. So that is most of my paintings. I am so thrilled to be um, included in this opportunity. So thank you for having me. Uh, so for your one specific series that you talked about, um, you're using vinyls. Do you choose specific vinyls depending on the artist and what the album, um, the artist talked or what said in the album? Or do you just choose it and do you later on um, depict the image of what the album's talking about on the vinyl? Are they related or are you just um, drawing random things on the vinyls? So a lot of the vinyls come from the 70s and 80s. So they do in general come from like way back when. So I'm not necessarily sticking with a specific artist or what the song is saying or what the album is about but I am using albums that have been used in the past and trying to bring them back to show that there is that old element, but hey, here's something new in addition to that. Up next, we have Aaliyah Bendis. Aaliyah, take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Aaliyah Bendis. I am a mixed media artist as well as a biologist, and this piece is titled Strata. Strata comes from the word stratum, which means layers. Um, in geology, it refers to the layers of rocks. In histology, stratum is used to differentiate the layers within tissues and organs. Um, in this piece, strata refers to the layers of our lives. On one hand, we have responsibilities and anxieties that layer on top of us, and we have to climb out of the web of responsibilities that are weighing us down. On the other hand, we have our passions and goals and love creating a strata that holds us up and pushes us forward. Um, strata was created to evoke emotion in both myself and in the viewer. Um, it allows us to reflect on the layers of our lives that make us who we are in this very moment. In biology, I am super interested in research of um, bacterias and viruses. Um, and I look forward to doing research on finding cures for um, some uncurable um, illnesses and viruses. Um, as an artist, you know, I'm always interested in making myself feel something as well as making others feel something. I think that the creativity um, from being an artist translates very well into biology and research. Um, because you have to be creative to make cures and to make medications. Um, it's not something that is just known. You know, it takes a lot of uh, experimentation and that translates right back into art where a lot of great art is experimentation. What was the hardest part of making this piece of maybe connecting everything or um, establishing where to start off from or just like making the yarn stick together? That's a great question. The hardest part of this was stability. Um, I was pushing nails into canvas and there was no support. Um, using wood, I would have been able to nail it into the wood, which would have given it much more stability. Um, so that's something that I will need to utilize moving forward. But to hold this together, I was actually using hot glue on the back of the nails, kind of like an earring back that I was making on the back of the nail um, to hold the nails in place. And by the time all of this string was on, it was pulling the nails in different directions. So I just had to keep adding glue to make it firm. I just wanna say thank you for this opportunity. Um, I am so glad to have been a part of this. Our next artist is Madison Mello, who will be sharing her drawings and paintings with us. Hi everyone, my name is Madison Mello and I am so happy to be here tonight 
and to be able to have this opportunity to share some of my artwork with y'all. Um, so I was brought up with a family that highly encouraged drawing, painting, crafts, Play-Doh when we were all young, any type of creative outlet. So I have been painting since I could hold a pencil or a paintbrush and drawing. I, I grew up remembering that we had this wall that every time I finished anything, it would go up on the wall, it's a really tall wall, and we would place all my paintings there. So I've been doing this for a while. Some of the artwork I wanted to share with you guys are mostly um, acrylic paintings that I do on canvas, but I also wanted to share a graphite pencil drawing of um, inspired by a image of Avril Lavigne, who was one of my favorite artists growing up the first image, which is um, which is a boy splashing in water. This was when I really got into a medium that I really liked, which was using the palette knife, which is just kind of like glopping on your paint and constantly going layers and layers and being able to add all these colors was just so beautiful to me. And I really enjoyed being able to play around and even like mix my colors and laying down them. I didn't have to mix them if I didn't want to. And it was just, it was a really fun process for me. Um, a lot of my paintings include the color blue, which can be sort of sad to some people, but I believe blue is very calming to me. I tend to put a lot of my emotion into my artwork, whether I like it or not. I do have a favorite artist. Her name is Kelly McKernan. She is a very um, modern artist. I found her scrolling through my Instagram one day, totally coincidental. I, I believe she inspires me with her color palette. Her colors are very vibrant and beautiful and she has so much thought behind each and every image and all of her, or not all of her work, but a lot of her work is derived from movies and social media and um, activism and a lot of things like that or fantasy. I just, I absolutely adore her work. But I also believe that my original inspiration was drawn from my mom. Um, two of the, both of the palette knife works that I included in this um, exhibition are actually derived from images that my mom took. So the last image is actually um, an image of like a salt lake in California where I'm from, except I decided to change the color palette into something a little bit more bright and abstract. Hi, Madison. I was curious about your um, paintings in the sense that um, you s seem to have like a, a huge preference and really a lot of passion in some of the palette knife paintings that you've shown us. And I was wondering if you'd continue to develop your skills more in the palette knife over the um, regular painting, if you have a preference towards either? That's a really great question. So I um, really would like to develop my skills a little bit more in the palette knife because I only do have very few amounts of that and I do enjoy it probably the most out of all of my paintings. I would really like to develop my skills in palette knife, but I also would like to develop my skills in just regular brush paintings as well, because I do think it's really important to be well-rounded as an artist. Um, I didn't include them, but I do like to work with other mediums as well as like um, resin is something I recently got into, or even more like crafty things like fabrics and such. So I hope that answers your question. I'm so glad that I've been able to share these works of art with you guys. Now Gabriel Akins will share his paintings and digital media creations. I was never really big into painting actually as a kid. I really was afraid of colors. So I, I just usually stuck to just drawing with pencils. But um, approaching the end of high school into college, I experimented a lot more. And um, not even just with 2D work, with 3D work as well. And that's what brought me to like modeling and designing characters and three in three D as well. Um, char yeah, character design has just always been a strong suit for me. And um, painting is something I actually recently got into because of a few of the classes I've taken at um, NSU, particularly like painting one and painting two, color theory stuff like that. Just helped me to develop my skills in those areas. 
because I, I probably wouldn't have done it on my own, honestly. And the modeling and sculpting in 3D, um, that was always just, that was a purely like skill I learned on my own. I didn't have really anybody in an institution help me to teach that. I used to be a dual major in biology and art coming in, and that just became a little bit unfeasible along the line. So I switched to a few other degrees and um, I will be graduating soon as a purely art major. But I have, I, I'm, I'm pretty well-rounded given I've taken like a lot of computer classes and some biological classes. I, I like this fill up space for just like a, a small little details and references. And um, I believe in one of the pieces um, I included, um, it's called Wasp in the Attic. That's a, actually a three by four painting. I did that for painting too. And as actually based off of um, a traumatic, semi-traumatic experience in my life when um, I think in the back of the early 2000s, there was a huge Africanized bee wasp problem going on in um, Florida. And one of our trees actually had like a huge colony of, of them in there. And we just couldn't approach that area. We were supposed to not go into the area because they could literally kill people. Eventually we got them out, but the idea behind that has still stayed fresh in my mind. I just like decided to put it on canvas. In the future, I probably won't be doing as much physical paintings or drawing. Well, drawing, I'll always be a part of me. I, I need that for my, my pipeline of working on things. But they do work in tandem a little bit. So let's say I want to do a character in 3D, maybe want to animate it. So I have an idea. I do a few drawings of it. I do um, like a, just a basic pose for it and um, helps me to build an idea of what I'm trying to work towards. And when I go on the computer and work in 3D starting on a model, I use that as a reference for both the general design and once when I get to the point where I'm starting to pose and making express and, mo and do stuff like that, like they, they work hand in hand. I can't really do something effectively in 3D without having a solid foundation in like drawing and sketching and like just general expression and animation. So those two, at least those will work together. As far as um, the digital illustration, that will be my, my frontier, my, my tr real approach when I'm trying to do like 2D illustrations or paintings. I wasn't really animation focused. I wanted to mostly be like a zookeeper or something like that. I liked animals a lot. I still do, but um, now, um, I'd like to go into the animation industry or even the game design industry as a, um, a modeler or animator on projects. And I, but right now I'm trying to work towards my own ideas and I'd like to either capitalize or just f fulfill what I'm trying to work towards now, because what you see, what you're seeing with my, my 3d work, those are models I'm using for my own game, my own animations. And I'd like to fulfill that as a career i'd like to stay in like that area of um game design and um, animation our final artist presenting tonight is marine artist annabelle brewster hello everyone um i am so thankful to be doing this tonight and my name is annabelle brewster um as you'll see tonight a lot of my paintings are aquatic themed or based around nature and animals um, I grew up in South Florida on the Caloosahassee River where I was always fishing and swimming and going boating and I've definitely through that grew a huge love and admiration towards nature and just the natural beauty that ecosystems have and sea creatures and so that's kind of what influenced my main primary style. So in my first painting it's called The Reef. And I like to use a lot of repurposed pallet wood. I think it's great to recycle and reuse materials and make them into something beautiful. So I create paintings on pallet wood in order to also give that rustic look. So this piece, the reef, um, is inspired by obviously the sea turtle and the coral and beautiful fish that are within that ecosystem. Um, the sea turtle is actually my favorite animal. Um, I went diving in Hawaii and I was actually able to swim with sea turtles and see them in their natural habitat. And that really just made me grow even fonder of this magnificent creature. They're very docile and just very beautiful in the way that they move throughout the water. So I decided to paint this subject against the plain um, wood background in order to give it that different look. I decided to leave the background 
natural and then add my layers of acrylic paint on top of that. And I really love to use a lot of bright colors in order to make that subject really pop against the natural wood. Um, my next painting is called Octi Gaze. Funny story about this one is the background behind the octopus is actually from a previous simple abstract painting I did for a staging of a home. So at first I was going to paint over the entire background, but then I was looking at the design and I turned it sideways and I was like, why don't I add a beautiful octopus just placed against that abstract background? This creature is another magnificent one of the ocean. They almost morph into their surroundings and I've watched so many documentaries on them because I find them so fascinating. My next painting is called Preserve Caretta. Um, Caretta is another word for sea turtle and this was an activism painting that was actually inspired by my um, painting class that I took at NSU. Um, we, for our final, we actually had to make a painting in our own style that was inspired by another artist. So I did so much research and I found this French artist, Onomizer, who paints beautiful um, animals and creatures that are actually endangered species. And he, ad he adds this graffiti-like style on top of the creature to promote the activism. So within this, I have different phrases and different fonts that I hand painted. And this piece took me a very long time to make sure I had all the details correct. But it definitely like just stands for preserving marine life and conservation and just protecting these beautiful creatures. Um, my next painting is called The Catch. And this is actually inspired by the heron. And, you know, living in South Florida, we see these beautiful birds everywhere, whether it's on the beach or even in my backyard on the river, they'll fly into my yard and try to get my koi fish. I just wanted to have that like strong essence and power that the bird holds. My next piece is called Interlockings. And as you can see, another octopus. Um, I love octopus as well, just probably as much as a sea turtle. And so for this one, I really um, wanted to play around with human form, but in my style, it would be a mermaid. And so I don't do mermaids or humans as much because um, it's a lot more challenging for me. Uh, animals come more naturally to paint for myself. I just get these images in my head of a sea creature and I'm able to just directly paint it. But with people, you really have to make sure that you look at the body structure and all the elements that go into this. So with this one, I really wanted to just do a simplified background within a beautiful mer mermaid that's almost interlocked with the octopus to show that symbi symbiotic relationship that could possibly occur if mermaids were real. You know, I'm sure they uh, octopus and mermaids would be friends. And then my final work of art is Beneath the Surface. Growing up on the Caloosahatchee River, we have mangroves everywhere because we're on the Gulf of Mexico. And it's a, a much more different ecosystem than I would say compared to the Atlantic Ocean. So we have a lot of um, brackish water where you see manatees and snook, redfish, tarpon, all these different sea creatures that are all within the same habitat. And in my backyard, one of my favorite things as a child was going out on my dock and seeing the manatees come up to are um, almost like our front lawn, but ocean, ocean uh, version, because with our pond that we have in my backyard, we feed the water back into the um, river. So the manatees are attracted to the fresh water. So it was absolutely amazing to see these as a young child, like coming up so close to our seawall and being able to just like look at them and even going boating, you know, they come up and they're very docile, beautiful creatures. And so I kind of wanted to just capture, you know, that natural ecosystem that you, you normally don't see beneath the surface. And this is another painting I created for this art show I have this weekend. And this one, um, I've done like close-ups of faces. I've done different animals besides marine animals, which I love doing. I like exploring different subjects because it challenges me and takes me out of my comfort zone. But um, I definitely just, I absolutely love nature. I'm so for conservation and preservation of, you know, beautiful sea creatures, nature in general. And so that's mainly like what drives me to create art. Tremendous thanks to each artist who presented here with us today. Be sure to follow them on social media for updates on recent projects and their progress. And be sure to follow us at the Frank Pembroke Pines on Facebook and Instagram.
as well as our website, www.thefrankgallery.org.